Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Stay in Touch Project Enhancements, version 5.77, Select Entity and Payment Method Associated with a Bill, Payment Method for Hidden or Removed Bills, and more, presented by Stay in Touch Implementation Consultant, Natasha Leck. I'm your host, Aaron Fisher, the content writer here at Stay in Touch. Today's presentation will cover how you can get the most out of the Stay in Touch PMS version 5.77 product release. In this webinar, we will cover the following enhancements. Activity log records payment method for hidden and removed bills. Entity and payment method linked to accounts. Display of PMS application version. Restrict, restrict the option to edit or remove overage transactions. Check for active add-on with date range when attempting to toggle off the enable add-on date range slash sets uh, toggle. Display only unique add-ons via stay in touch guest key, kiosk. Past dates and day of the week color display via Stay in Touch Guest Kiosk and refactoring of Salto integration. We'll have a short Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Feel free to submit questions throughout the presentation and we'll answer them in the order they're received at the end. And that's all I have right now. Natasha, I'm gonna hand the presentation over to you. Thank you, Erin, and thank you for that introduction. Mm -hmm. All right, let me dive right in. Uh, the first item of the release notes uh, talks about the activity log recording payment method of removed bills. So I'm gonna go to a reservation here in my demo environment. And here I have linked a second guest or an accompanying guest as well as a company card. And when I go to the bill and charges here, I am able to change or associate the bills with different uh, people or company or travel agent cards. So here you can see that this one is set to uh, the primary guest, which is me. And then here you can see that there's a different payment method together with my accompanying guest. And here for bill number three, I have uh, the company card set up with the cash payment method. Now, if I remove this bill and I now go back to the stay card to the activity log at the bottom here, you can see that the activity log now records that remove bill. So you see the hide bill, bill number three, um, and you can also see the payment type that has been removed, the cash payments. The second part of the release note is relating to entity and payment method linking for accounts. So from the menu, you can either go into a group or a house account. Uh, for my example, I will go into front desk and accounts. And I prepared an example account here. And when I now go to the transactions tab, over here, you can see the payment type drop-down selection. So here I can decide who is paying and select the payment method and entity, entity that is paying for the bill. Uh, at the moment, you see that there's no entity because I don't have a company or travel agent associated. And here you would be able to see the different payment types. So if I now associate a company card, You can see that I am now able to select hotel automation or the company to pay and the payment method that goes with that. Let's say cash, for example, and I can add that and you can see that it's set here. This also means that the invoice will now have the company on there on the left hand side. So if I want to generate the invoice, you can also see that because I've now linked that company card, the option to disp to select company or travel agent is not possible anymore because I am already generating an invoice for the company. And if I click on print from here, you'll be able to see at the bottom left, once the preview is loaded, that I now have the hotel information on there. Um, if as a payment method, credit card would be selected, I have the option here when I go to manual 
to select the credit card that exists on the company card. So you can see this is the company that is already, or the credit card that is already associated with the company card. I would, of course, also be able to add a new card. Uh, the entity and payment method that have been selected will be stored on this transactions tab. So if I go around and I come back, you can see that what I've selected will stay here. Um, it is possible to select direct bill here already. You can see that this now gets added. Um, and the direct bill functionality when paying will only work if you have a company card attached to the account. Without a company or travel agent, you won't be able to uh, pay the bill to direct bill. When I remove the company card, you can see that I get a pop-up straight away uh, saying removing card may update billing and rate information. And when I detach the card, you can see that the hotel automation option uh, as the option to select as an entity has now disappeared. The bill will be assigned back to the account itself. The activity log here will also record added payment methods and entities, as well as removed company and travel agent cards. So if I now go to my activity log, you can see that I have removed the company card here, but you can also see the payment method removed and here, uh, the other one that I have removed together with the payment type as well. All right, the next item is going to be relating to the about application. Um, in the settings, when we go into menu, settings and settings again, a new tab called about application can be activated, which you can see here at the bottom, to see the current PMS version, which will display over here below. Uh, please contact support if you want this to be activated. The next topic of our release notes is associated with allowances, which means uh, that, or what this specifically relates to, uh, is that it's not possible to edit or remove an overage transaction on the bill and charges. So if I go to my reservation, I'm gonna just pull this one up. In my bill and charges, you can see here that I have allowances set up for this property, and you can see that I have this charge code 201, where I have used um, the restaurant food as an allowance, and here you can see that I have an overage. And that overage has been posted here on the bill as expected for restaurant food. Making corrections to this um, will have to be done manually from now on. So if I click on the purple pencil and when I click on remove charge, I will get a pop-up that says, hey, you have to manually adjust this on the bill. But if I click on edit charge, I will get that same pop-up as well. So any uh, adjustment, as I said, that you want to make to this, you'll have to do that manually. We're going to go back into settings for the next subject, settings and settings again, which relates to uh, the add-on with date range toggle. Um, in settings, rates and add-ons, I have created a add-on with date range. And here you can see at the bottom that I have that date range set up from January 9th, 29th to February 3rd. Because this add-on has a date range, um, we now have the new feature that in rates and rate add-ons and settings, it will not be possible to disable the add-on date range and sets if you have an add-on that has that date range attached. So if I now try to save this, you will see that it gets toggled back on and I get the notification that says unable to deactivate as add-on with active date range exists. If there would be no add-ons with the date range or set, I would be able to deactivate this toggle. The next item that I want to display is relating to kiosk and the option for unique add-ons that we have added. So at the moment, the add-ons that 
currently display on the kiosk. Let me just open up the kiosk. If I go and try to check in my reservation, let me just continue here. You will see that at the moment I am offering on the kiosk the breakfast person add-on as well as the bike add-on. However, this breakfast person add-on is also already associated with this reservation. So I'm going to stop the process now. If I go and find this reservation in the PMS, this one over here, you can see that for the add-ons that are associated, we already have breakfast person attached. Now, to make sure that if there is an add-on already on the reservation and you don't want that to then also display on the kiosk, we have created the option for unique add-ons. So if I go back into my settings, I go into kiosk, and then I go to add-ons, You can see here that these are the add-ons that we are showing on the kiosk. I can decide to click here for display unique, only unique add-ons. We save that. And then when I try to go through that flow again on the kiosk, let me just take you through the steps again to get to Right, we can see here breakfast person has been associated for this reservation. And then when we get to the add on screen, you can now see here that the breakfast person doesn't get offered because that is already associated with my reservation. So of those two options, only the bike option in this case will remain. That is what the unique add ons functionality uh, will now do. Something that I cannot show, but I want to highlight during this release note is that the integration with Salto has been enhanced. Supporting functionality uh, with common areas as well as mobile keys via the Just In Mobile app. Hotels looking to update their current Salto integration can reach out to support to get this process started. And then the last item of the release notes today is relating to the kiosk as well. So I'm going to stay here. Uh, for the key, for the kiosk, past dates on the calendar uh, used to default to white. So if the chosen background color for, uh, let me go to the kiosk design setup here. If the chosen background for that kiosk, like you can see here, was white, you would not be able to read the date boxes or the dates in the boxes. So with the change that we've made now, uh, past dates are now reflected using this text color option here. So if I go into my kiosk and I'm going to put in my name and I'm going to select my departure date, you can now see that all the uh, dates here are displayed and the color that it uses is that color that is set in the kiosk design setup and then this text color right over here. All right, those are all the items of the release notes that I wanted to go over today. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Natasha, for that presentation. I'd now like Happy to turn over the floor for uh, questions. Remember, you can submit questions through the question box in the middle of the control panel. So I don't see any questions yet, but I'll give everyone a few seconds to enter those. All right, since there aren't any questions, I'll switch it back to my screen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so in this webinar, we covered um, the activity log, that the activity log records payment method for hidden bill, hidden or removed bills, that entity and payment method uh, link to accounts, 
the display of PMS application version, uh, restrict the option to edit or remove over transactions, check for active add-ons with a date range when attempting to toggle off the enable add-on date range slash sets toggle, display only unique add-ons via stay in touch guest kiosk, past dates and day of the week color display via stay in touch guest kiosk, and finally, the refactoring of this uh, Salto integration. With that, I'd like to conclude our presentation. Thank you all for coming. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to email me at erin.fisher at stayintouch.com. Thanks again.